In this video, I'm looking at one of the most popular battery monitors for solar systems, the Victron BMV712 Smart. It's a 500 amp shunt with a display. I will show you what it can do, how to set it up, and how it compares to a cheaper shunt. I had a lot of people requesting this video. So I reached out to Victron and they sent me the shunt for testing. This is what's included in the box. We have the 500 amp shunt and a display and a faceplate if you want to mount it on the wall. Then we have a voltage sensing wire that connects to your main battery positive, including a fuse. The second cable is optional. This connects to the midpoint of a battery in series or to monitor your starter battery. Then you have a 10 meter cable that connects the shunt to the display, a quick installation guide, the manual, and in this little booklet, you will find the pin and the puck code for the Bluetooth connection. You can also find it on the back of the display. All the shunts I have tested, including this one, use M10 bolts, not the usual M8 bolts you will find on the battery. So that's something to keep in mind when you're buying Lux. There are clear markings on where to connect the battery and your loads or chargers. And the shunt itself comes with a solid base. I just installed the shunt on the board. Let me show you how I did it. We have the main battery and the main negative is going to the shunt where it shows battery. Then the other side is going to the negative bus bar. So this point becomes your new main battery negative because it reads all the energy going in and out of the battery. Then we've connected the voltage sensing wire to the battery positive. I recommend connecting it to the battery positive because we don't want any voltage drop on this wire. Then I've added the data cable to the back of the display. Then you can program the shunt on the display or use an app called Victron Connect. I recommend using the app because it's easier. And when you first connect, you should do a firmware update. And I'll talk about programming later in the video. Let's go over some features of this shunt. Bluetooth only works if you connect the display. If you don't connect the display, there is no Bluetooth. It shows time remaining under current load. Useful when you want to know how long your fridge, lights or tools keep running. The 500 amp shunt is 6000 watts at 12 volts. You should never need more than that in a van, RV or a cabin setup. It works with 12, 24 and 48 volt batteries. It can monitor midpoint voltage if you're using two or four batteries in series. You can see the deviation between the batteries in percentage or voltage. You can also set an alarm. You can monitor your starting battery as well. For example, you have a van where you charge from an alternator and you want the system to recognize the voltage of your starter battery. It has a programmable relay. You can trigger a dump load, generator start or alarm at certain voltages or state of charge levels. There are two relays, one normally open and one normally closed. You can also invert them through the app. It works with a GX device like a Serbo GX using a VE direct cable for full remote monitoring on a Victron VRM. However, a GX device is not needed for it to work. And with VE smart networking, it can share the state of charge with a Victron MPPT wirelessly over Bluetooth. Let's see how the app works. When we open up the app, we can see our devices. So we click the shunt. And then we can see all the data, like the percentage of the battery, the voltage, the current and the power. When we go to the history tab, we can see the amount of synchronizations, which I'll talk about later, and the amount of cycles. The cycles is from 65% to 90%, and that's count as one cycle. We can also see the trends with also different variables. 
let's now go to the settings and open the battery settings first. The battery capacity is 100 amp hours and I've set the charged voltage for lithium at 14.2 volts. Then the current measurement direction is normal because we have wired the shunt correctly. Otherwise it would be reversed. The discharge floor is 0% for lithium and 50% for lead acid. Then we have the tail current of 4% and the charge detection time of 3 minutes. But I'll talk about this later. Then we have the Pukert exponent and I recommend setting it to 1.03 for lithium. And the charge efficiency factor can stay at 95%. The current threshold of 0.1 amps is when the shunt doesn't recognize any current anymore. So the inverter is drawing 0.8 amps, so we're good here. And then the time to go averaging period is about the time that's being used to average the load being drawn, so it can calculate a runtime left. The battery SOC on reset, we will keep the state of charge. You can also clear it or set it to 100% when uh, the connection to the battery is lost or there is some communication error, but I prefer to keep the state of charge. You can also manually set the state of charge, but I don't recommend that. What I do recommend is charging up your battery to 100% and then press the synchronize button. I've charged it to 100%, so let's synchronize that the shunt knows the battery is fully charged. And we don't need to do a zero current calibration. Let's go to the relay settings. Here you can set an alarm based on the state of charge or a voltage. Then we go to the display setting, that's this one, and you can set the backlight intensity, have it always on and adjust the scroll speed. You can also choose which variable you want to show on the display, which is quite useful. Then we have the VE smart networking. You can see the shunt is part of the MPPT in the VE smart network. So it's sharing the voltage and the current to the MPPT. Here is a unique feature for this shunt that's called automatic synchronization. This happens when three conditions are met. The first one is that the absorption voltage is higher than 14.2 volts for a 12 volt battery. That's the charged voltage in the settings. And the second is that the current must be lower than 4% of the capacity. For a 100 amp hour battery, that's 4 amps. And the third condition is that the first and the second are true for at least 3 minutes. That's called the charge detection time in the settings. Then it sets the shunt to 100%. Manual syncing is also possible in the app. Without automatic synchronization, the state of charge will slowly start to drift away from reality. Here's why. When you charge and discharge a battery quickly, it loses some efficiency. That inefficiency shows up as heat inside the battery. But the shunt can't measure that. Over time, those little losses add up and the state of charge reading drifts away from reality. Automatic synchronization fixes this by resetting the shunt whenever the battery is truly full. That's also why it's a good practice to charge your battery to 100% on a regular basis. Let's compare it to some other shunts. First, the Eile shunt. I made a video about it about a year ago. It's cheaper, but doesn't have Bluetooth. There is no app and no smart networking no automatic recalibration and you have to provide your own positive cable with a fuse. The mounting base is not as solid as the BMV. This one is good for basic systems and it will cost you $38. The next shunts are from Victron 
and there is quite some confusion about their differences. So let me explain. The BMV 700 is an older version for only one battery. It doesn't have Bluetooth, but you can add Bluetooth dongle for $40 if you want to see it on your phone. It will cost you $110. Then we have the BMV 702. It's an upgrade on the 700 with a secondary battery voltage measurement. It does not include Bluetooth. So you have to buy a separate Bluetooth dongle as well. It will cost you $137. Next up is the Victron Smart Shunt. It has Bluetooth built in and offers the exact same function as the BMV 712, just without the display. If you're happy using the app for everything, the Smart Shunt is actually the better choice. With the BMV 712, you need the display connected for Bluetooth to work, but with the Smart Shunt, it's an all-in-one unit. And the big difference, the Smart Shunt will only cost you $99 for the 500 amp version and $72 for the 300 amp version. And then the one I'm reviewing in this video is the BMV 712 Smart. It has Bluetooth built in and it can monitor a second battery. It also uses slightly less idle power compared to other options. The price is around $150 and you can choose between a grey or a black model. Then we have the Lynx Shunt. It's designed to fit into the Lynx busbar system. It includes a 1000 amp shunt, but you will need a GX device to actually read the data. And this one will cost you $340. And then there's also the new BMV 700H. It's built for high voltage batteries up to 385 volts. And it's a bit pricey at around $500. Do you use any of these shunts? Please let us know your experience with them in the comments. So if you're looking for a Victron shunt, you basically have two options. If you want a display, then go for the BMV 712 Smart. If you don't need a display, then go for the Smart shunt. I will link both in the description. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more videos like these. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.